Hello, everybody. This is Terry from the Pre Mom team with special guest Erin Sherman, Master Life Coach, Specialing in Fertility, and founder and co CEO of Organic Conceptions. She and her husband, Mark, created a fantastic fertility coaching program out of their own struggles with trying to conceive. And they've done some really great research and created such a jam packed, awesome program. And we might touch on their story at the end of this today because it's such a great story. I love when people get really passionate because of their own experiences. It's always fun to hear. Um, but today we'll be talking about balancing fertility and answering your questions. And we got a couple of really good um, advanced questions. But before I go into those, I just want to remind you if you're watching this later on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can keep track of all the latest content from Premom and you can find Organic Conceptions, our partners, in the Premom app. So be sure you check that out. They are guests in our Premom community that recently launched. You can find them under, I think right now it's called Stress. They have some great tips in there all the time. As well as in the More section of the app, you can find their, I think it's called Stress Free Fertility Quiz. And it gives you a good idea of if you might need some extra support from someone like Organic Conceptions. So. Be sure to check that out and let's jump into those advanced questions. Again, if you have questions live, please shoot them in the comments. I'll be watching. So we had a couple people ask about the two biggies. And this is so funny to me because Erin talked about these. She's like, they're actually two mainly stressful periods of your cycle, right? When you are waiting for that positive, which we infamously call the TWW or two week wait. And then something Erin taught me is about the other half of your cycle. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I, I try to separate them by emotions, right? And the emotions that we're feeling because us as humans, we're just driven by emotions. We're always looking to get away from the bad emotions and toward the good emotions. Um, and so when we're in that two week wait from ovulation to taking the pregnancy test, that's sort of like the hyped up anxiety. That's where you're, you're hearing people talking probably about um, stress. Like they'll, they'll use the words, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, right? I'm nervous or anticipating. That's when that anxiousness comes into play. Um, and then the, the other period is after the negative um, pregnancy test all the way up and through to the next ovulation period. And that's what's sort of like the down um, negative emotions where people start to feel sad, depressed, um, doubtful, you know. Um, and so there's this like up and down um, of emotions and there's the, the negative um, all the way up into that heightened, you know, maybe it's even hope um, and, and excitement along with it if, if you're allowing yourself to feel that but more of like the up emotions. Um, and so it's just interesting to notice the difference between the two and really take, just like you're charting everything else, really take stock and notice the emotions that you're feeling during those times. Yeah, and for some, it sounds like it could be really a downward spiral where you're going through that two week wait experience. And then, like you said, the downward emotion of you didn't get that positive. So now you're dealing with that experience. And then it's again, you're at your two week wait again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I like to tell people and to remind people is that you're always in control of what you're thinking. You know, you can't, you cannot change your circumstance, but you can control the thoughts that you're thinking and the meaning that you're making of what's happening. Right. So you can have this experience. You're seeing the negative pregnancy test, but what are you telling yourself about that? And that's, you know, a lot of times we've got it already on pre-record. It's a negative pregnancy test. Well, of course, I'm sad. It's awful. It's just devastating. I can't believe this is still happening and happened again. You know, you've got it on autopilot and you're just, it's just this flood. But notice how that's actually feeling in your body when you're thinking those thoughts. And what I also teach is that when you think a thought, it actually produces an emotion in your body. Sometimes people think the circumstance is actually creating the emotion. Well, I feel bad because this happened. 
right? Or I'm stressed because this is happening. But when that's not necessarily the case, it's that in between, it's when what we're thinking about that's causing the emotion and we have control over our thoughts. So knowing this and knowing that, you know, you're going to have another cycle, you have an opportunity to make a change and to take a look and say, okay, what do I typically tell myself and what do I want to feel? So, okay, now I get, I get to be in the driver's seat. What do I want to feel? So I actually have to change what I'm going to tell myself about it. And this sounds just like basic positive self-talk or like, you know, positive reinforcement. And it is, but it's the awareness of it. And a lot of people are just, they're on autopilot and it's just so easy to just, you know, slip into that old way of thinking. You really do need to pay attention and you can train your brain to actually produce, you know, positive feelings if we're, if we're aware. Yeah. So for that first question, how not to stress waiting for the day, I'll see the positive. It sounds like it's really important to, first of all, recognize that stress is just a part of life and then pause and objectively look at what is being triggered by this stress. Absolutely. Yes. And what you're telling yourself and write it down because, um, you know, often when I'm coaching people, it's fun to watch someone's face when I ask them, you know, what is it that you're telling yourself? And then when they say it out loud, it's almost like they're in shock they're like, Oh, that's awful. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm, you know, the thing, the thoughts that we think in our minds, they're, they're like in the background. Um, but they do make that they have such an impact on our emotions, on our bodies, on our actions, on our lives. Um, so just being aware of those, um, writing them down is a, is an excellent way to do this and be honest. Right. And then once you write them down, what am I, what am I looking at here? I'm looking at just a bunch of thoughts and that's okay. That's what our brains do. Our brains just automatically offer us. It's, it's our brains trying to make sense of our circumstances, right? So they're judging, our brain is judging or they're, it's judging what's happening. It's thinking it's keeping us safe and we can say, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you trying to keep me safe. And this is something you've seen before. So I understand, right? You can have a conversation with your brain. It's kind of fun. Um, but, but also then allow it, allow yourself to get back in the driver's seat and shut off that primitive brain, turn on this frontal lobe and say, okay, now I'm going to be making the decisions. And actually, I don't want to be thinking those things. I would like to think, I would like to think that, um, you know, two pink lines would be fantastic. And I know that I'll see them, right. I'm going to see them at one point. It'll, I'm just curious to see when I'm going to see them. It might not be next time, but I'm okay with that you know, try that thought on. I'm, I'm sure that none of you ha have been thinking that lately, um, but it's an option. It's an option for you. And so, you know, just know I that. that. I think that's so freeing, right? That we can, we can absolutely choose what we're thinking. Yeah, I love that. I wonder what's going to show up this time. Yeah, I've never heard anyone talk about it that way. It's pretty yeah, neat. just trying to get curious. It's a good tool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just too easy to slip into that negativity. Um, but I also I wanted to talk about um, stress in general, right? I wanted to define the word stress and really uh, maybe ask if there are people listening um, what stress means to them. If anybody wants to pop in the chat, go for it. If anybody has anything. Like notice how it shows up in your body. What do you do? What does it feel like? When does it happen? Anything about just whatever it is, because we use the word a lot, right? It's just, it just falls off, falls out of our mouths. Stress, stress. It's a buzzword. Yeah, go ahead and comment. Yes. I know for me, it, it shows up in a couple of different places in my body, depending on the trigger. Like um, sometimes it'll be in my side. Like it'll be, it feels like my liver or something. I don't know if that's exactly what's there, but certain types of stress. And if I'm feeling like really, really anxious, it might be more like here. It feels mm. like it's here. Anybody yes, else yes. want to weigh in? Sometimes there's a delay. Yeah, that's okay. So, so feeling it physically, right. And understanding where it is physically in your body. And that's such a great telltale sign. And, and when you get good at catching that sensation, then you can stop and say, okay, what was I just thinking about? And 
that's an amazing tool. You can actually catch yourself in the thought and, and, you know, slow the thoughts down because they come so rapidly, but slowing your thoughts down and okay. Oh, no wonder why I'm feeling this feeling of stress because I was just thinking this, right. And stop blaming it on the thing that's happening and take some responsibility for what's going on up here. And it's, it can do wonders. That's great. Yeah. Nobody else in here gets stressed. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it can show up in so many places. I had a friend who her tongue used to swell before exams, her tongue. Really? And yes. Yes. Um, you know, you can have headaches, you can have stomach issues, um, you can lose sleep. There's just, I mean, stress can show up anywhere in your body. Um, so we can talk about also, you know, I love to talk about mindset work and mindfulness and things like that, but there are physical things that you can do to ensure to keep the stress levels down. Um, I do recommend mindset work first, right? Check in with your brain, write it all down, take a look at it, see if it makes sense. If you want to keep some, put them back in. If you don't throw the rest away, but if you, um, you know, once you've done that work, make sure that you're checking off your, you know, your bucket list. One is getting good sleep, right? And some people might be like, well, how can I sleep if I'm so stressed? <laughs> uh, but getting into that good routine and that rhythm, you know, I, I hate to say that a cool room will work when we're talking about 108 degrees, <laughs> but, you know, cool room, maybe like 68 degrees <clears throat> and getting into a routine where you're not sitting in your bed for anything else other than sleep. You know, some people will like take their work to bed or they'll watch TV or they'll do other things, but really try to, your brain is literally a trained monkey. You can get it to do anything you want if you do it over and over again. So if you get into your bed, just right to go to sleep and you only allow that activity, I mean, we can, we can make room for other things. I mean, let's face it. We're trying to have babies, but you know, at that time of night, right. And so you have this routine where it's whatever time you're going to bed, you know, set the alarm, whatever it is, shut off the phone, shut off all of the things and then go to sleep. And if you're not able to sleep, the experts, I'm not an expert, but experts say, get out of your bed and go somewhere else. Like, you know, go in another room, right. You know, whatever in a chair, just not there and then when you feel like you want to try again go back so anyway the whole point is to get yourself into the habit of falling asleep and you will yeah so sleep's important sleep's a huge factor it's going to change your chemistry of your whole body and then um, getting enough water and then getting exercise and exercise comes in amazing amounts of forms everybody's like idea of exercise can be different um but I always say, do something that you love because that's just going to make you want to do it more, right? So getting, you know, enough exercise moving in the day, whether it's dancing around or swimming, biking, walking, um, anything that you can do that you really enjoy that you'll, that you'll do. Um, writing in a journal, that's, that's going along with mindfulness work, right? But just getting the thoughts out um, and breathing, breathing techniques huge. There's so many, you could just Google breathing for de-stressing. It can, it can literally change you in the moment, like change your physiology, breath work. Um, so yeah, those are some, some pro tips to de-stress in the moment. I mean, that's like basic 101, but I would say always start with the mind. Awesome. I have a couple of follow-up questions for you. Great. I loved your suggestion for the two week wait, like the shift in mindset. Can you talk about an example for when they have the negative result of the pregnancy test? Is there yeah. some type of language you would use? Absolutely. Well, so the fun thing with language is it has to support, it, ha it has to be believable to your brain. So whatever you tell yourself, has to create or generate the result that you want. So always ask yourself, what do I want to feel, right? Get used to having conversations with yourself. What do I want to feel during this time? And what would I have to say to myself to allow for that feeling, right? So you can decide, You this is where you can get creative, whatever language you wanna use 
to support that time is what I would recommend. I don't have, I mean, the lines are, yeah, you can, you can minimize that. That's called NLP. It's an old trick. You can minimize something in your mind so that it supports what you really want to feel and believe. Um, but for that time where you actually have had the letdown and I would say just allow right for that time and, and give yourself grace. It's okay to have a disappointment and feel disappointed. Never judge yourself for having a feeling. So many times people get caught up in a secondary emotion. If they're feeling sad, then they're feeling guilty that they're feeling sad. And then that's worse, right? Or if you're feeling, um, you know, doubtful, and then you're feeling, um, you know, you're just judging yourself for that, then it's 10 times worse. So whatever feeling you're feeling, allow it to be. Allow the emotion to be in your body. Just, you know, it's okay. It's all part of it. And it will pass. And it's okay. Wonderful. Do you have any other suggestions for um, allowing those feelings to flow? Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm having this feeling. Oh, I'm freaking out. I'm having this feeling. Yes, I do. I have lots of things. <laughs> so one is um, absolutely just be paying attention to where it lives in your body, right? And when you feel it, allow for it to, I always say it to people who have really a fear of feeling negative emotions and really just don't want to go there. So important to have them. Um, allow them for a few minutes, right? Like set a timer, say five minutes, set a timer for five minutes and say, okay, I'm going to feel this horribleness, right? I'm going to just cry or I'm going to be angry or just allowing it to be. But while it's happening, stay curious and watch, be the watcher. And okay, where is this happening in my body? What am I thinking? Okay, is this is this going to show up um, again? If it if it does, it's okay. You know, just kind of having that self talk, but watching it, feeling it, seeing it through to the end. Okay, timer is done, and then we can move on. And when I say move on, a lot of people just jump to like uh, they want to watch TV or they want to go on their phone or they'll get on the telephone or like anything just to avoid having the emotion. People, you know, turn to drugs, alcohol, um, eating, um, anything buffering, right? It's called buffering, just not allowing for the emotion to take hold because we're afraid, right? And what is the worst thing that's going to really happen? I mean, honestly, if you have a negative emotion, it's going to feel crappy, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Just buffering it away is worse because it's like when you're, you know, when you're in a pool and you have a beach ball and you're pushing it down and you're holding it underwater, that's like pushing down a negative emotion or buffering it away. It's going to pop up and it's going to smack you in the face and you're going to get water up your nose and it's going to be terrible. Right? So that's what we don't want to, we don't want to do. We don't want to avoid the negative emotions. Then they just start to feel worse. They start to become um, overwhelming. We just don't want to feel them, right? It's like little kids, when they go get a shot at the doctors, the anticipation of the bad feeling, they will just do anything to avoid that. And then when it's, when it actually happens, they realize it wasn't that bad. You know, you just have to go through it. You know, that's a terrible analogy, but but it's true. It's the fear of the emotion that we're all as humans, by the way, this is not specific to infertility, but it's just us. We're conditioned to, to avoid pain. That's how we've stayed alive as a species, right? And we just have to just avoid, um, but being aware of it and processing it is the work that I promise you, if you do it, you will feel better. Awesome. And then I had a question about um, journaling. I know reflection is a very important part of this process and organic conceptions uses it a lot. Yes. What do you, yeah. what's a, um, a modification for someone who doesn't like to journal? What do they do? So journaling has a bad rap. I think it's like people think they need to be like an author and write this like amazing deep thoughts. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you can literally just, write a, a stream of consciousness because no, first of all, no one's going to read it. <laughs> you don't even have to go back and read it if you don't want to. Um, you can just make a, a bulleted list of things that go through your mind, right? And just getting it out on paper clarifies so much. You can just see it, 
for what it is instead of it all being up here. It really does clean it out. Um, it's just like when you organize a drawer, you're like, wow, I didn't know I had that many spatulas, <laughs> right? But it's it's just, it's important work. It's it's um, hygiene for your brain. Yeah, and then if you, if you don't even wanna do that, you can go as simple as just, okay, gratitude journal. Three things a day. Just write down three things that I'm grateful for. Um, and, you know, that sounds cliche, but it, again, it's training your brain, getting your brain to start thinking about the things that are working and the things that are going well and teaching your brain, okay, I can look for that and you'll find that. Awesome. And what are your thoughts on like typing things out or also like your little voice memo recorder to you? So always handwriting is the best way. For some reason, there's studies and studies showing that actually writing, um, I always have a pen in my hand, always writing, um, and journal after journal after journal. Um, but getting your thoughts down, pen and pen and paper is the best way. But if you, you know, if you don't want to write or if it's tiring or if you just are like, no way. Yes, absolutely. Using your memo. But then I would say go back and read it right? Or print it out because then it's, it's really um, sinking into your brain and clearing it out. Sometimes just saying it isn't enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just had a comment. Those are great suggestions on how to change your thought process. Excellent. Give it a try, right? I always say, don't consume, don't just take it in, go try it. Take one of these things and, and implement, right? Yeah. Yes. So what would you like to um, leave everyone with today? We're coming up on uh, 20 minutes pretty soon. And also, if you want to tell a little bit about your story, what can you share with us today? Sure. Yeah. So, um, well, our story is when we were just starting um, to try to have a family, um, it didn't, it didn't happen like we thought it would right away, um, which side note, I think that <laughs> there's such a lie out there. It starts when we're like in fifth grade in sex ed and our teachers tell us that, you know, there's this sperm and egg and this is how it happens. And then from there, we're all to told how to avoid it, right? And just, if you don't have sex, you don't have a baby. And so we all think that that's how it works, but Really, there's so much, so much that goes into it and the timing and the chemistry and the moons and the planets need to be aligned really in order for this miracle to take place. And that's how we should be looking at it. Um, and that's how when you see the pink line, you think, you know what? Obviously, it's not that easy. Like, not that, e not that simple. It is easy. It's not simple, right? It's just, it's, it's going to happen. It's just not going to happen the way that they said it was going to happen in, in sex ed. <laughs> Whereas like anytime you have sex, you have the baby, right? right? So anyway, just wanted to clarify that for any, any of those of you who are still hung up on that, like it should be happening. I don't understand. Like this is not, it's broken. It's not broken. It's just going to take some time. So um, for me, I had that, that, thought and um that perception and quickly it became very sad um and we went for treatments um and we had no diagnosis we were tested for everything we didn't have any particular uh, medical diagnosis it was just unexplained infertility um, and it lasted five years not to scare off anyone um but we perpetuated a lot of stress um just by getting caught in a cycle of despair and going for any treatment and avoiding so many things that brought us joy and just stressing out really like living in the, I think I might be pregnant every single five minutes, you know, um, we didn't enjoy life. And so fast forward, I wanted to get off the ride, stopped everything, got pregnant. Um, and then it happened again, second baby, um, for five years later, um, and we were adopting. And when the family chose us and we were about to have this baby, um, from another family, which was amazing, I found out I was pregnant. Um, so, and we told the family and they ended up 
they ended up keeping their their child, which was pretty cool in itself. Uh, but this happened twice. And so then we were like, what is, what happened? What was that? Um, and my husband was the one who wanted to really do the research and say, there's something, something here. And so we learned, and if anybody's listened before, you've heard the story, we, we learned that there were actual, actually nine um, critical phases or like um, we call them tipping points that happen for pretty much everyone. Um, they're pretty common across everyone that is trying to conceive. Um, and we learned about these tipping points and then we turned them into a program so we can actually help people to navigate and understand what's happening um, in their brains and in their bodies and in their lives and in the social realm, everything, everything that there is to know. Um, and so that's that's where we were, that's how we came to be, and that's the work that we're doing now. So amazing. That was the quick. Right, so if, <laughs> yeah, that was really fast. That was, that was <laughs> it. <a> challenge. <laughs> there was another baby in there too, but <laughs> she never gets mentioned because she just, you know, came along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just fit into the narrative. Um, yeah, so you offered a whole bunch of great information about stress and um, different parts of your cycle and stress and what you can do about it. Um, what's like one big summary takeaway that we can leave our one viewers with? One big summary with? and takeaway is you are you. So get to know yourself, listen to your thoughts, make your choices, have your own back. Talk to your partner, you know, tell yourself the truth, decide what you want. It's not, it's not for everyone else to decide and everybody, everybody has their own path, but yeah. So you all have work to do. No one, no one's going to get away with just going through it. And you know, the, the more you check in with yourself, the better you will feel. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us today, Erin. Thank you. And we would like to have Erin on again. I know she's interested in coming back. So please, if you're watching, let us know what else we could talk about to support you related to um, emotional health and fertility. And remember, you can find Erin, you can find Organic Conceptions popping into the community and pre-mom under stress. Also in the quiz under more. Um, which is stress-free fertility. Ah, remember to, <laughs> um, take that quiz. It's really great. Um, assess yourself. Give yourself a starting point. See if you need some extra support. It's a wonderful program. The Shermans are wonderful people. And um, we'll see you again soon. Thank take you. Take care.